WP Rocket is designed to make your site load faster. So let's see how you can measure the improvement. During this video, to run a speed test and measure performance, we will use Google's very own speed testing tool, Google PageSpeed Insights. But there are other reliable speed testing tools such as GT Metrics and Pingdom. Before running the speed test, make sure that WP Rocket is caching and optimizing your site. and that you already have configured the additional settings. We have some articles on our documentation and videos if you need any help to make the most out of WP Rocket. Google PageSpeed Insights measures the performance of a page for mobile and desktop devices. However, Google predominantly uses the mobile version of a site's content for indexing and ranking on both desktop and mobile. This is called mobile-first indexing. Even if your traffic is not coming through mobile devices, it's important that you optimize and test the mobile performance, as it is what Google is looking at. Also, Google PageSpeed Insights will calculate your score using different servers based on your physical location, which is presumably the closest or most optimal server. But if you want to choose your own location, we recommend setting up a free account on GT Metrics so you can choose different locations. Now let's run some tests. To start with our speed tests, we are going to open two window tabs. In one, we will run a speed test with WP Rocket, and in the other one, without WP Rocket to compare. Enter your URL in PageSpeed Insights. Be sure you are testing the correct version of your URL. If your site uses HTTPS, that's what you want to use in your speed test. Otherwise, it will add unnecessary load time. Run the test. On the other tab, we will test the performance without WP Rocket. To do so, add question mark no WP Rocket at the end of your URL to test bypassing WP Rocket. You can now compare both page speed reports and see the huge impact that WP Rocket's caching and optimizations have on your website. We recommend that you run a few tests and get a couple different readings, as there are a number of factors that can affect your test. You don't want one anomaly to mislead you about how things really are going. Running several tests will provide a much more accurate average to use as your final result. Now, the page speed report itself gives you a lot of information, so here are a few key things to pay attention to. The overall score ranges from 0 to 100 points. A higher score is better, and a score of 90 or above indicates that the page is performing well. PageSpeed Insights looks at the overall user experience across devices and provides suggestions about how that page can be improved on both mobile and desktop based on Lighthouse a developer's tool created by Google. The report page is really useful as you can see exactly what's contributing to a poorly performing site and how to improve your website speed. It collects data in a controlled environment, the lab data, as well as a real world field environment, the field data. So you have full visibility on your core web vitals and you can prevent any potential problems from affecting online performance and SEO. Let's examine the results page. First, we find the Core Web Vitals Assessment, which is based on the information taken from real visitors and collected during the last 28 days. This means that whatever you do, it will not impact the assessment in real time. So any changes or optimizations will only have a real-time impact on the performance diagnostics down below. Now let's dig into the main loading metrics to look at. The largest contentful paint, LCP is a Core Web Vitals metric that measures how long it takes for the largest visible element on the site to be rendered. This is similar to the load time and you want it to be as low as possible. So your LCP score should be less than or equal to 2.5 seconds. The Cumulative Layout Shift CLS, measures how visibly stable a page is by quantifying how often users might experience unexpected shifts to the layout. Ideally, your site should have a CLS score of 0.1 seconds or less. The Interaction to Next Paint INP, assesses the page's responsiveness to user interactions. It observes delays in presenting your visitors a visual response to their clicks, taps, and key presses that occur along the whole visit of a page. The final INP value is the longest interaction observed. To consider a page having a good responsiveness, the INP value should be 200 milliseconds or below. The IMP metric is taken from real interactions. That means that for a page to have an IMP score, Google has to collect enough data from different interactions measured, and this can take time. Underneath the metrics, you'll find the diagnostics. The report gives you a useful breakdown of potential weak points and the steps you can take to improve performance. 
Moreover, when WP Rocket is activated and you haven't yet enabled all key features, the Page Speed Report manages to include recommendations on which WP Rocket feature you should activate to improve specific reports. Keep an eye on these messages since they are very useful to make the most out of WP Rocket. All right, now you should have a better idea of how to measure the performance of your site, how WP Rocket is contributing, and how to understand the main metrics of website optimization.